Well, hi everyone, welcome along. How are you going? Um, today we're doing a video about how to put flaps on a four channel plane. Um, so, if you're not sure what I mean, a uh, four channel plane doesn't actually have flaps, it has ailerons, rudder, elevator, and throttle. So, what I'd like to do is take a four channel plane like this glider and make the ailerons go down so that they act as flaps. The trick is to have them still acting as ailerons and flaps at the same time so that means we have to do channel mixing okay so this plane here this is the FMS LET13 this is a very good glider it's all EPO I uh, love this plane it flies really really well um, but the problem is it's quite hard to land because it glides so well they have to fly it a long way away and cut the throttle off and uh, it's quite hard to land where you want it to land so it'd be great if it had flaps so if you have the right kind of controller, you can put flaps on a plane like this. It comes with this controller. Okay, this is a four-channel controller. Um, so you, there's no way that you can get flaps to work with this. Obviously, it doesn't have the right configuration. So what I've done is I've spent, uh, I was about $70 on the internet. And I got one of these. Now, this is a six-channel computerized controller. What it does is you can program in pretty much anything you like and it, you know, it sends that to the plane. So I can program it in to have the ailerons down to act as flaps and that's actually called flapperons. Um, so what I suggest you do, have, have watched to the end of this video, see if you like the final outcome and then get one of these um, and then you can make any of your four channel planes have flaps. It's good if you've got a foam glider like this, it's great for landing. Okay, so I'm going to go through that now. Okay, so the controller that I'm using is the FlySky FST6. And you can get these on the internet. I got this off eBay, free delivery from Hong Kong. And it actually took about less than a week to get to New Zealand from Hong Kong. So that was pretty impressive. Um, so the first thing you have to do to set this up is you have to take the receiver that comes with it and wire in your ailerons to that receiver. So, you would find that on a four channel plane, both ailerons would initially be wired into channel one. Uh, now the problem with that is that you, you can't get them to move independently because they're both wired up to the same channel. So if I go left, one will go up and one will go down, and if I go right, so I can't get them both to go down using four channels. So what I have to do is there should be a Y plug that connects the two together. You take that off so that you have the two ailerons as two different plugs. The first one goes into channel 1 and the second one goes into channel 5 or channel 6. Uh, that top one there. Okay, so what that now means is I've got independent control over channel 1 and channel 5 as the ailerons. And the next thing that has to happen, you need to program that into your uh, transmitter so that it controls them in the way that you want to. So I'm just going to quickly go through uh, how to make that mix. Uh, firstly, I've bound this to the plane so that um, as I'm doing it, I can, I can check that I'm doing it correctly. Um, so when it's on, the plane will actually respond to what I'm doing. So be careful not to put the throttle on. So... Here we are, this is what it looks like, and I enter into the setup, and I select the plane that I want, which is the LET13, and then I go back out to the function setup. Now the first thing you need to do is set up your auxiliary channel. I've got the, the second set of ailerons attached to channel 5. You could do a channel 6, but I've got it set to channel 5. And the button that I'm going to be using is called variable A, and that's up here. Now in this device, rather than using a switch, I have these two variable functions here, and I can turn this dial. So this is the dial set up to the second aileron, which will be the control of the flaps. So I select that, and then I go back out. And then I need to go down to my mixes. So I've already done this a few moments ago to check that it would work. And I'll just show you what these numbers are here. So firstly, mix number one, you can see I've switched it on there. The master is channel one, that's the first aileron. 
the slave is channel 5, the second aileron. And I've got the mixes as 100 and 100. So as I scroll across to mix number 2, you can see I've just reversed that channel 5, channel 1 rather than 1, 5. And the mixes are negative 100 and negative 100. So once I push confirm, that's all done. Now what that means is that this will control the ailerons and this variable switch here will lift the ailerons up and down simultaneously. Okay, so here now is the finished product. I've mixed the channels and the flaperons are all set to go. Uh, so the first thing is to check that the ailerons still work. So left and right. Okay, that's working as normal. So what I want to do now is test the flaperons to make sure they work. So I'm going to turn that dial down. Okay, so there it goes down. And it should also be the same on the other side there. Which it is. So what that means is when I'm coming into land, so I'll have that neutral position and then when I'm coming into land, I'll just simply crank that dial down and that will give me slightly more lift, but it'll also cause a lot of drag which will make it easier to land because it will steepen my glide slope. So that's great, that's working fine, so I turn that back to the neutral position. Now the flip side of this, as an extra bonus, is that because this dial is sort of a negative 100 to 100, um, I can also put these ailerons up. So see that both ailerons are gone up. Now that's actually called reflex. Uh, that will decrease lift. Um, so why would I use that? Well, when you put a model like this into a steep dive, if you've got one of these gliders, what you'll find is that it glides so well that when it goes very, very fast, um, it wants to pull up because it's generating so much lift. So what I can do is, if I want to do a steep dive, is I can just put a wee bit of reflex on there and that will decrease the lift and I'll be able to do those steeper dives without it pulling up and losing too much speed. Um, conversely, if I was uh, slope soaring and there was just too much lift, it was just pulling up and swooping too much, uh, I could add extra weight to the nose or while I'm out there I can just put a wee bit of reflex in and that will decrease the lift and that will maintain its position in the air. The alternative to that is actually called camber, which is when I just put a wee bit of undercut there and so that's sort of like a, a half flat and that increases the lift just slightly so let's say um, I was out and I was slope soaring and it was just pulling down a wee bit too hard it wasn't really maintaining its position in the air um, what I could do is just give it a wee bit of camber that will generate just a little bit more lift and it'll slow it down of course um, but it might just hold it in that position so what I can do now is with the single switch I can use my flaperons, my camber and my reflex to change the glide slope of this which is just a four channel foamy. So that's great, that um, adds a whole lot more options to this plane. Of course if you've got a plane with flaps built in, uh, you can do other things as well like crow which is when the flaps go down and the ailerons go up and it acts as an air brake. So that's all I wanted to say. I hope that you've found this helpful. Uh, I do recommend getting the six channel computer controller, uh, especially one like this that was only $70 delivered on eBay. Very good deal. Um, I'm really looking forward to what I can do with this plane now that I've got more options. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye.